sometimes called the pits. Crew members prepare the mud in these tanks and make it ready for circulation. The heart of the circulating system is the mud pump. Often, rigs have two pumps, one primary pump and one for backup. Or, if hole conditions require it, the driller can compound or combine the two pumps to circulate large volumes of mud. In fact, on deep wells, the rig may have three or four compound pumps. The powerful pump, or pumps, pick up mud from the mud tanks and send it to the drill string and bit. The pump moves the mud into the discharge line, up the standpipe, and into the rotary hose. The standpipe takes the mud about halfway up the mast. The rotary hose is attached to the standpipe. The rotary hose is strong, flexible hose that moves with a swivel as it goes up and down in the mast. From the rotary hose, the pump moves mud through the swivel and then down the kelly and drill string. On rigs with a top drive, the mud moves through a passage in the top drive and then into the drill string. The pump moves the mud down the drill string to the bit. At the bit, the mud jets out of the openings or nozzles in the bit. The jets of mud move cuttings away from the bit. Mud then continues up the annulus, carrying the cuttings with it. From the annulus, the mud with the cuttings in it goes through the return line, sometimes called the flow line, to the shale shaker. The shale shaker removes the cuttings from the mud. The mud then falls into the mud tanks where the mud pump can pick it up and continue the circulation process. Mud is made up at the rig location. Most rigs have several steel mud tanks. Mud and additives are mixed and held in the tank. Some land rigs also have a reserve pit dug out of the ground. Mud tanks are also called mud pits a carryover from the days of earthen pits. The rig does not necessarily use all the mud tanks at once, although it does use several. The active tanks hold mud the pump actively circulates. Often, mud components come to the rig in... Normally, the house or... These silo-like tanks, they hold mud additives, like crew members use some additives in such large quantities. Bulk tanks usually have their own hopper or pneumatic system. The pump takes the mud out of the active mud tanks and circulates it through the system. Crew members connect the mud tanks with the piping and manifolds. The number of active mud tanks depends on the amount of mud needed to keep the hole full and the volume required on the surface to keep the mud in good condition for circulating. The sand trap is the tank directly below the shale shaker. The shale shaker removes most of the cuttings from the mud, but some are so small the shaker cannot trap them. These fall into the sand trap. The sand trap is the first settling tank. Crew members have to clean it regularly to remove the built-up solids. Some small or old rigs may have two or more settling tanks in the tank system. They allow solids in the mud to settle out. But settling tanks do not do a very good job as compared with newer generation solids removal equipment. So, today, 
most rigs use a desander and desilter. Reserve tanks are not a part of the active mud tank system. Instead, the crew uses them to hold excess mud. Or they may use them to mix a different type of mud than the pump is currently circulating. They may also store heavy mud for emergency well control operations. A slug tank is a relatively small separate tank, or it may be a small separate part of a larger tank. The crew uses the slug tank to mix a slug. A slug is a small amount of heavy mud that is pumped down the string. Crew members may also use a slug tank to mix a small amount of mud for a special purpose. For example, the driller may need to place or spot a small quantity of high viscosity mud, also called a pill, at some point down hole. The suction tank is where the mud pump picks up mud ready to circulate down hole. Mud in the suction tank should be clean, free of solids and gas, and be properly formulated or conditioned. Crew members use the chemical tank to mix special chemicals, such as caustic, that they will put into the active mud tanks. On some land rigs, the rig owner digs a large pit next to the rig. This pit is called the reserve pit. The crew puts waste mud and runoff from In an emergency, they can also use it as a place to Often, the rig operator lines the reserve pit with a thick plastic sheet. And, if the rig is on a migratory bird flyway, the operator covers it with netting to keep the waterfowl from landing in it. Land rigs drilling in environmentally sensitive areas will not have a reserve pit. Instead, wastes and runoff are hauled to an approved waste disposal area. Powerful mud pumps pick up mud from the suction tank and circulate the mud down hole, out the bit, and back to the surface. In a triplex pump, the pistons discharge mud only when they move forward in the liner. Then, when they move back, they draw in mud on the same side of the piston. Because of this, they are also called single acting. Single acting triplex pumps pump mud at relatively high speeds. Input horsepower ranges from 220 to 2200. Large pumps can pump over 1100 gallons per minute. Some big pumps have a maximum rated working pressure of over 7000 psi. Here's a schematic of a triplex pump. It also has three intake valves and three discharge valves. It also has a pulsation dampener in the discharge line. Look at the piston at left. It has just completed pushing mud out of the liner and through the open discharge valve. The piston is at its maximum point of forward travel. The other two pistons are at other positions in their travel, also pumping mud. But right now, concentrate on the left one to understand how the pump works. The left piston has completed its backstroke, drawing in mud through the open intake valve. As the piston moved back, it lifted the intake valve off its seat and drew mud in. A strong spring holds the discharge valve closed. The left piston has moved forward, pushing mud out through the now open discharge valve. A strong spring holds the intake valve closed. The left piston has completed its forward stroke the full length of the liner, 
completely discharging the mud from it. All three pistons work together to keep a continuous flow of mud coming into and out of the pump. Crew members can change the liners and pistons. Not only can they replace worn out ones, but they can also install different sizes. Generally, they use large liners and pistons when the pump needs to move large volumes of mud at relatively low pressure. They use small liners and pistons when the pump needs to move smaller volumes of mud at relatively high pressure. The shale shaker mechanically takes out the large cuttings from the mud. It does not, however, remove very fine cuttings and other small solid particles. These solids can be fine sand particles and other very fine materials, often called silt. Good drilling practice requires removing these undesirable solids. If not removed, the solids can increase the weight of the mud more than required, reduce the bit's penetration rate, and significantly increase the rate of wear on circulating equipment. The rig uses mechanical solids removing equipment, such as hydrocyclones and centrifuges, to remove the fine solids. Sometimes, the hole penetrates a formation that has small amounts of gas. This gas gets into the mud, becomes entrained in it, and must be removed before the pump recirculates the mud back down hole. A degasser removes entrained gas from the mud. The shale shaker has rapidly vibrating screens. The mud and cuttings from the return line fall onto it. The vibrating screens catch the larger cuttings. These cuttings fall into the reserve pit, the sea, or other container for disposal. The liquid mud goes into the sand trap, which is a special mud tank. Shale shakers look simple. In fact, though, Manufacturers carefully design them to make the screens vibrate in a very controlled way. Sometimes, the crew sends mud through a vacuum degasser. The degasser removes gas from the mud. If the gas were not removed, it could make the mud too light, not dense enough. As a result, the well could kick. Formation fluids can enter the well bore and have to be controlled to prevent a blowout. Another problem. If the driller recirculates gas-cut mud, the gas could cause the mud pumps to gas lock. Gas-locked pumps pump gas and mud instead of just mud, which is highly inefficient. So, to remove gas, crew members use a degasser. In a vacuum degasser, mud with gas in it enters at the top and spills out over several baffle plates, a spreader. Spreading out the mud presents a large surface area for the gas to break out. Also, the vacuum pump creates a vacuum pressure lower than the surrounding atmosphere, inside the degasser. This vacuum makes it very easy for the gas to escape from the spread out mud. The removed gas leaves through a vent, which sends the gas a safe distance away from the rig. The gas-free mud falls to the bottom and goes back into the mud tanks downstream from the degasser. 
A hydrocyclone system consists of several cones. Mud enters through a side opening at the large end of each cone. It swirls around inside the cone. This centrifugal force or cyclone motion throws the larger particles to the side of the cone. There, the particles move to the bottom of the cone and drop out. Clean mud goes out the outlet at the top. A desander has large cones. It removes particles as small as about 40 microns. A micron is one millionth of a meter, which is very small. A desilter has smaller cones than a desander. Desilters remove particles down to about 20 microns. A mud cleaner has still smaller cones. It removes particles down to about 7 microns. Since barite, that desirable solid which gives weight to the mud, is also about 7 microns, Screens are included on mud cleaners to retrieve the barite so it can be returned to the system. Inside the cone, mud enters from the side and spirals down. This movement flings the solids to the side. The spiraling action creates a vortex in the center, somewhat like a tornado. It is an area of lower pressure, so the vortex sucks the liquid mud up through the center and out through the top of the cone. Meanwhile, the solids slide down the side and out the bottom of the cone. The smaller the cone, the smaller is the particle it can remove, but more cones are needed to handle a given volume of mud. A centrifuge spins mud at high speed. This creates centrifugal force. Centrifugal force throws the particles to the side of the centrifuge, where they are removed. A centrifuge removes particles as small as 2 to 5 microns, which includes barite. Sometimes, crew members run a centrifuge at a specific speed to remove barite, so the rig can use it again on the next hole. Occasionally, the rig owner runs two centrifuges. The first removes the barite, and the second the finer particles. Crew members then re-add the barite to the mud system. Crew members mount agitators on one or more of the tanks. Agitators stir the mud in the tanks to keep solids from settling and to maintain uniform mud properties. One popular agitator is the paddle type. An electric motor rotates paddles to stir the mud. A pit volume totalizer, or PVT, alerts the driller to changes in the level of mud in the tanks. A float in each tank, right? For example, the panel alerts the this device, if the mud level, this float in a mud tank is part of a, usually, the floats rise or fall with the mud level in the active. The mud system normally has several centrifugal pumps. A centrifugal pump puts out relatively low pressure, but it can move a large volume of mud. A hopper is like a big funnel. Crew members put sacks of mud material into it. They do not, however, use the hopper to mix caustic soda. The hopper can blow dry caustic back into the face of the worker mixing it. In addition to being dangerous, adding caustic through the hopper can flocculate the mud. Cause it to clump up.
A crew member opens the sack of material at the top of the hopper and feeds the material into the funnel. At the same time, a jet of mud from a centrifugal pump goes through a nozzle at the bottom of the funnel. This jet creates suction. The suction pulls the material into the mud stream and thoroughly mixes it. Let's see how well you've learned the names of the mud conditioning equipment. For each piece of equipment you see,